As the leader of the Sages group in your church, part of your role, and this has to be ongoing, this is not something you can put on the calendar and say, I'm going to do this in March on the 15th day of March. This has to be ongoing. It is validating the significance of the people who are in that group. And again, I reiterate, ongoing. It's not one and done. It's not once a year. It's not twice a year. And uh, you, you can use a lot of different means and methods. You can use handwritten cards or, or just anything that is just a personal conversation. But validate anything a sage age saint does. Now, if you're dealing with people who are constantly accomplishing, you can kind of let the pressure off a little bit. But what gets honored gets repeated. If you want these people to do all and be all they can for God, then validate the things that they're already doing. It's also part of your role to put in perspective the value that they now have. I, I hear this sometimes from older folk. I used to. Wish you'd have known me when I used to. Wish you'd have known me when I could. And then they go on and say something like, but about all I can do now is pray. And it almost ends with a negative thought about all I can do now. And that phrase about all I can do now is pray minimizes the significance of prayer, which is inconsistent with everything the scripture teaches about prayer. Help your sages to see and stop saying about all I can do is pray. How do we do this? Well, you're going to have to put some seed in their mind. Think about this. As they neared the crucifixion, Christ had a conversation with Simon Peter. He warned him about some of the things that lay ahead. He, he, he told Simon, Satan hath desired to have you that he might sift you as wheat. It's a portrayal of Satan wanting to collect the dregs and let all that is good in Simon Peter fall through. So Satan has this desire. Satan has wanted you have Simon Peter at risk. You have Jesus Christ giving a warning to Simon Peter about this thing. But it doesn't stop there. Jesus identifies action that he is going to take on Simon Peter's behalf. This is the creator of the universe. This is almighty God manifest in flesh. He has so, so, so many options. So many options. He could have called angels to protect Simon Peter. He could have hidden him in a cave where that Satan perhaps could not find him. He had access to the power of divine rebuke because Satan had already been defeated several times. So many options. So many options. And Jesus said to Peter that day, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. All those options. And Jesus said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray for you. Jesus' attitude toward the effectiveness of prayer does not seem consistent with our phrase, but all I can do now is pray. The latter sounds pitiful. The former sounds powerful. I will pray for thee, that thy faith fail not. There's nothing in that that has the sound of a whine to it. So validate the power of the prayer of your sages. In your group, there are people 
who have seen and experienced the miraculous. In your group, it may well be that there are people who have been students of prayer and they've read about prayer, they've studied prayer, they've considered prayer, and they've worked at becoming more effective in prayer personally. If, if this is the case, you may want to get them involved and in, in maybe teaching another person or two to be more effective in prayer. I have prayed for thee, not the insignificant, but the one action I've decided that I'll take on your behalf. I have prayed for thee. Where I pastor, we have a monthly prayer chain. We have prayer each week. We have pre-service prayer. It's a priority. I've done some teaching about prayer. Wrote a book on how to practice personal devotion. Preached about prayer. Made it a priority. In my last two pastorates, the first message I preached to them after becoming pastor is first of all prayer. First of all prayer. But I still feel the need to keep growing in prayer, to keep improving, for someone to coach, to suggest, to help me. I don't pray in the Spirit as much as I need to. Someone to impact and help my prayer life. One of the greatest missions of your sages is generational transition. Sages impacting the arriving generation. Could it be? No, not could it be. It is that the most important thing your sages can do for the young people in the church is to pray for them. But not generalized. Oh, God bless our young couples. But praying specifically, calling them by name. It has been said that prayer moves the heart of God. I do know this, that prayer changes things, but it's also true that as I pray, a burden comes into my heart for the thing that I'm praying about. This idea of the intentional, specific prayer of older people, that's, that's, a, that's a connecting influence. That's a powerful influence in the church because as your sages pray for young people, they're going to become more sensitive to the needs of those who are coming behind. And then those who are younger, as they discover that sages care enough about them to pray specifically, key specifically for them. Specificity is so important. I remember hearing the late J.T. Pugh talk about his own model in preparing to teach and preach and he said he would uh, pray for a time in the church prayer room, and then he would walk into the church building. And he would go sit down where varied people would sit in each service. And he would sit there, and he would call their name. I know that Sister Smith is going through a hard time. Her granddaughter's on her deathbed. God, lift up my sister. When she comes to church tonight, let her receive something. Move over and sit at the place where a young person was being tempted to go the wrong direction with his life, and J.T. Pugh would pray with specific words for that man. And in his prayer, he would pray, and God, give me a sensitivity let me be used of the Holy Ghost. And I don't think that that's something simply happens from a platform or even from a preacher. I believe there is a ministry of the saints that we need to take hold of. And your sages have the ability to be used of God in powerful ways. There are things that are known. Family has a little boy. He's been raised close to his mother's skirt. First day of school's coming up. Going to be hard on him, going to be hard on her. Why can't a sage pray? The mother who's going through postpartum depression, the man who a few days ago lost his job, 
God, let your word and let your spirit minister to them. Give me some ability to help them. And if I can't, then send somebody who can. I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Okay? Now, you're going to have to put some tools in their hands to help them pray for the arriving generations. How about providing them a list of names? People who are younger than them. People perhaps from 40, 45 down. And as you develop this prayer list, it's going to be wise in some instances to provide an identifier. Bethany, this girl is the daughter of so-and-so, the granddaughter of, and you're identifying because a lot of times we who are sages, we see the younger, but we don't know their names always, and we don't know their connections. Prayer list. I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. One church made baseball-sized, baseball card-sized prayer cards for each young person, each young couple in their church and distributed those to the people who were in the sage age group. I have prayed for thee. I have prayed for thee. Powerful. It's not all I can do is pray. Another church made a PowerPoint presentation showing each person that was, and each family that was under 40 years of age. And they had that presentation going, rotating in the prayer room for some of the times when they were in pre-service prayer. Specific ideas, tools that you can use, those abound. But the important thing that I'm trying to get home to you here is we need to help our sages see, I can. I can. And what I can do makes a difference. I can do. I can do like Jesus did in praying for Simon Peter. I will pray for thee that thy faith fail not. That's significant. It's powerful. It's protection. You, you, you are the influencer. Lead those of the sage age to understand that what they do has meaning and then coach them to pray specifically for those who are younger. We can, I can, you can. Let's do this thing and be powerful for God.